Heaven in the Bible, and the Urantia Book. Many people wonder, is there an afterlife? Is there a heavenly place or places we might go after this life? Both the Bible and the Urantia Book affirm there is indeed an afterlife to which we are resurrected in a place or places where we live after we leave this mortal existence. But even if we believe in an afterlife, we probably have a lot of questions about what it's like. Will we know that we are the same person who we were on earth? Will we see and recognize those people in our lives that have gone before us? Will we be instantly perfected, or will we continue to grow spiritually and in other ways? Will our time there be filled with constant worship, or will we have some actual work to do? The Urantia book speaks of the nature of God, our next life, the life and teachings of Jesus, and many other topics. Although the book is not a Christian book, it has many concepts in common with Christianity. For instance, the book describes the Trinity and supports the concept of Jesus as both human and divine. This video compares the picture of our afterlife given in the Bible with that pictured in the Urantia book. Whereas the Bible gives us only brief glimpses of the afterlife, the Urantia book paints a very detailed picture. The biblical description of the afterlife is found mainly in the book of Revelation. In both the Bible and the Urantia book, the soul is identified as the spiritual part of us that survives death and becomes the spiritual core of our new self. The authors of the Urantia book tell us that as we grow spiritually in this life, the seat of our identity gradually transfers from our human mind to our soul. The authors also say that the soul is a marantia reality. Marantia is a state of being that lies between the purely material and the purely spiritual. In the next life, our bodies will consist of marantia material. Our marantia bodies will be gradually transformed until we finally become fully spiritual beings. Our minds will be of the marantia order as well. While the Marantia existence isn't described in detail in the Bible, there are passages that indicate that our new bodies will be different. Paul may have known of the Marantia phase of being when he said that in heaven there will be a more enduring substance. In 1 Corinthians 15.42, Paul says, So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. In 1 Corinthians 15.44, he tells us, it is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. The authors of the Urantia book signify that our new Marantia body will be superior to our human body and we will have a higher and better mind with which to continue our spiritual and intellectual progress. But there is one capability we have here we will not have in the next life. We will not be able to have children. Though our bodies are of Marantia material, they will seem just as real to us there as our human bodies do here. And I'm sure a hug will be just as warm and comforting there as it is here. A phase of our being that apparently is not described in the Bible is the personality. According to the authors of the Urantia book, it is a characteristic that is our identity and is given to us by God the Father. Each personality is absolutely unique. It is not an entity like our soul. It is a part of our nature that determines our unique identity. It is also the source of our free will, according to the authors of the Urantia book. The personality functions to integrate our mind, body, and soul, so we experience ourselves as a unity. In addition to our souls and personalities, there is a third important presence within us, the indwelling Spirit of God called the Thought Adjuster by the authors. The Thought Adjuster is a small, still voice that speaks to our souls and occasionally to our minds. The authors call this presence a Thought Adjuster because it will adjust our thoughts in a spiritual direction with our cooperation. This divine spark is referred to in a number of biblical passages such as 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you. Our potentially immortal souls are born and grow in the interaction between our human selves and this divine spark. 
as our soul grows, we are ever more receptive to the leadings of our adjuster. During our life here on earth and in the afterlife, this divine indweller offers us spiritual guidance. Following this guidance leads to soul growth and personal survival. But when we ignore it or go against its leading, we may move in the opposite direction. At the time of our resurrection at the next level, this divine presence rejoins us to guide us eventually to its source, God the Father. As we progress Godward, we in this God fragment grow closer in nature until we are as one. Do you have to be a Christian to go to heaven? Some people feel you do. But we do not have to be Christians to gain eternal life. All that is required is for us to follow the guidance of the God Spirit that lives in each person. So we can expect to meet Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, and people of all religions or no religion at all in heaven. But what about hell? Is there a place of eternal punishment? In the book of Revelation 2015, the unbelievers are cast into an eternal fire and suffer eternal torment. While Jesus didn't speak of a place of eternal punishment, he did indicate that there are consequences for those who reject God. Jesus says nothing about eternal torture and punishment. There are a number of places where he mentions Gehenna, which many biblical translators rendered as hell. But Gehenna is not hell. It is not a place of eternal punishment. It was once a place of human sacrifice by the Baalites, later used as a place for cremations by the Romans. The Urantia book authors do not support the concept of a place of eternal punishment, but they tell us that those who fully and finally reject God will not be resurrected. They will cease to exist as self-aware beings. We accept God by trying to connect to him and by trying to follow his will for us. Jesus taught us how to follow God's will and thus attain eternal life. He taught us that we should love God and one another. Is heaven just one great city as described in the book of Revelation 21, 9 through 25? In 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Are there more than three of these heavens? Hinduism and Islam speak of seven heavens. Paul also says that this man, who according to some biblical scholars was probably Paul himself, was caught up into paradise, indicating that paradise is a place different from the three heavens. Jesus also spoke of paradise when he spoke to the thief on the cross beside his. Luke 23:43 quotes him as saying, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Revelations 21:1 tells us, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This seems to say that we will be on another planet with different constellations in the sky. Could this be a description of one of the mansion worlds described in the Urantia book? The authors of the Urantia book tell us that there are seven of these mansion worlds. In earlier versions of the Bible, in John 14:2, Jesus is quoted as saying, In my Father's house are many mansions. Later versions say many rooms. The mansion worlds are those many mansions or rooms Jesus referred to. According to the authors, we will be resurrected and live for a while on one of these seven worlds, and then progress to the next higher world. Which of these worlds we begin with depends on how much progress we have made here on earth. Each successive mansion world represents a higher level of spiritual progress. If we have made little progress here on earth, we may have a lot of remedial work to do before we can progress to the more advanced mansion worlds. These mansion worlds do not function without some sort of spiritual administration. There are various orders of angels and other types of spirit and material beings who oversee everything from the education systems to the energy systems that power all the activities of the mansion worlds. Some Christians believe that we will be made perfect when we are resurrected, but there is little biblical justification for this. It is obvious to many of us that we have much unfulfilled potential when we leave this world for the next and that much further work is needed to bring us to perfection. This unfinished status may account for the belief in reincarnation 
by many Eastern religions and some Christians. Such people feel that coming back here gives us the opportunity for further growth. But the authors of the Urantia book say that our further growth takes place on the mansion worlds where we will have better bodies and minds and excellent teachers to assist us in progressing to higher levels. Revelation 21 through 22 speaks of a city that is the dwelling place of God, the place we go after death if we are worthy. There is a river that runs through the city, and its banks are lined with the trees of life and many different kinds of fruit. It sounds as if resurrected mortals will be eating this fruit in the next life. On the mansion worlds, the authors of the Urantia book say that initially we will eat vegetables of the Marantia order, but no meat. And the animals there are all benign and vegetarians as well. This is in the spirit of Isaiah 11.6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the young goat, the calf and the lion will graze together, and a little child will lead them. The book of Revelation goes on to say that the leaves of the trees by the river are used for healing. This seems to imply that we can get sick in heaven. However, the authors of the Urantia book indicate that we will not be plagued by the diseases and health problems we have here, but we can injure ourselves in accidents. We are still more material than we are spiritual on these worlds. What will we do in the afterlife? The Bible doesn't really give us an idea of how our time will be spent, other than worshiping God a lot, playing the harps of God mentioned in the book of Revelation, and perhaps eating the fruit of the trees of life. The Rancho book authors say that we will spend time learning the information and skills we'll need to continue our progression. We will learn how the universe operates and receive training for our eventual universe careers. As we learn new things, we will act as teachers to those in the status levels below us. There will be time for prayer and worship, and there will be time for recreation and relaxation. There will be presentations of higher forms of music, art, plays, etc. Many of the art forms there are unknown here on our home world. If you are a musician here, you can be one there. If you are involved in science here, you can learn and work in science there. Whatever your interests and skills are here, there will no doubt be something similar to engage your interest and work there. Our lives will be full of discovery and progress. There will be meaningful work as well as times of spiritual contemplation. People may wonder if everything is goodness and light as soon as we are resurrected on one of the mansion worlds. Unfortunately, we will carry along our troublesome personality traits with us. We will have to deal with these traits and we will have to address these deficiencies as we continue our spiritual growth. If we are procrastinators, we will have to learn to overcome this tendency. Whatever is disagreeable in our character or whatever retards our spiritual progress must be corrected before we can progress to higher levels. The authors of the Urantia book inform us that we are still more material than spiritual when we begin our ascent through the mansion worlds. At some point we will transition from Urantia persons to first stage spirit beings. But our progress in education will continue for a very long time through many levels before we reach this goal. Eventually, however, we will achieve the presence of our spirit father in paradise. This is the time we become what the authors call finaliters. Then we will come back to the many inhabited planets of the material universe to serve in spiritual capacities and begin our eternal career. We might infer from the Bible that we will keep our identity in the afterlife, but the Urantia book states explicitly that we will know who we are and remember all those who are part of our lives. Some of these people made the journey to the mansion rooms before us, and we'll be able to meet with them. Jesus said that there is no marriage in heaven, but the Arantia book authors tell us that if we had a long, close relationship with our mates here, we can often work together as a pair on some assignments. Though we do not appear as we did when we were physical beings, we will still carry the male or female natures within our beings all the way to paradise and beyond. Christians look forward to meeting Jesus in heaven, as pictured in the lyrics of the old song, He walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. The Arantia book authors tell us that we will indeed sometime meet Christ Michael, 
the spiritual head of our local universe. This same Christ Michael incarnated here as the human Jesus over 2,000 years ago. And who will we be with in heaven? The Bible and Christian theology support the idea that all the Christian believers will be there. But what about non-Christians? The authors of the Urantia book tell us that all who respond positively to God's indwelling spirit will survive. Having certain beliefs or being a member of some particular religion is not required for survival. What about intelligent beings on other planets, if there are any? The authors of the Urantia book tell us that the universe is teeming with inhabited planets. Jesus said he had other sheep that are not of this fold. He may have been referring to beings on other planets. Yes, they'll be there with us if they meet the same criteria for survival. We will have to learn to live and work with them just as we must learn to work and live with people of different races, religions, and cultures, both here and at the next level and beyond. Some people ask if their beloved pets will be there with them. Both the Bible and the Urantia book authors say that we survive because we have a soul. Animals do not have souls, but they do have an identity. It is only my speculation, but perhaps that identity finds expression elsewhere. But in any case, we carry them in our memories and hearts, and they will live forever in that way. It's hard to think about eternity, yet that is where our future lies. Will we get bored enduring such an endless stretch of time? No, there will always be something new and fascinating to see and do as we progress inward towards the paradise center of all things. But what then? As finaliters, we will now be equipped to travel back to the worlds of time and space and serve in many ways. Quoting Jesus in Matthew 23:11, The greatest among you will be your servant. Our willingness to serve is an indication of the spiritual level we have achieved. No, boredom will not be a problem of our future lives. Our voyage of discovery will never end. Part of our journey is learning ever more about God and becoming ever more like God. But this journey is not just for finaliters. All beings less than God, such as angels, can experience growth in meanings and values and growth in God-likeness. Because God is infinite and eternal, our voyage of discovery can never end.